If you're not landing software engineering interviews, you're doing one of two things wrong. Possibility number one is that your resume is just bad. Like straight up, your resume is bad. If you're not getting any interviews, resume is not good. Or possibility number two is you're simply not applying enough. And I know that's not exactly novel information, but I think sometimes people just need to hear it how it is. It's easy to get in this pattern of sort of just blaming the market or blaming whatever factors are completely out of your control. And Yes, those things do play some role in whether or not you're able to land a job or land an interview even as a software engineer, but those things are out of your control, so just not worth really putting too much thought or effort into them. Instead, you should focus on the things that are actually in your control. So let's talk about it. I've interviewed at most of the big tech companies as well as just a ton of other places, and well, that was many years ago, and the market has certainly shifted for the worse since then, it is still very, very possible to land interviews as a software engineer, even if you are a new grad or somebody with little to no experience before. In fact, I've even worked with some people who've landed interviews in the last few months, so it is absolutely still possible. So first, I think it's important to divide the companies that we are applying to up into two main categories. The first is going to be big tech. Now, this includes all the FANG companies, as well as the major unicorns and just the other pretty large tech companies, think Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, etc. But also, this can include some very large companies that you wouldn't maybe think of as like a tech company, but do actually have a large tech workforce. For example, Walmart actually has a very large software engineering workforce, and I would put them in this category. But the key point that I want to focus on that sort of creates this category is that the companies in it broadly hire software engineers. And what I mean by this is that generally speaking, most of these companies will make some job posting and they'll use that job posting, say for a software engineer, to hire hundreds, if not thousands of software engineers throughout the year. And this especially happens at the entry level. So for example, companies like Google and Meta might post a job opening for a software engineer that looks like a single job opening when you see it on LinkedIn or whatever job board. But in reality, that is a job opening that they don't know exactly how many they're going to hire. And it's sort of hiring on a rolling basis as they're essentially just always hiring more software engineers. And what this means is that for these companies, this hiring process is sort of a process of scale rather than a process of trying to find the single best possible candidate that they can. On the other hand, when a smaller company like a startup hires a software engineer, there's a good chance that that's the only software engineer that they're going to higher maybe for months, if not even for the whole year. So because of that, they're going to put a lot more effort into it and they're going to do a lot more due diligence on the people that they are potentially interviewing and potentially hiring. For example, if you apply to a company like Google or Meta, it's unlikely that the recruiter is going to spend much more than 30 seconds to a minute on your resume. And in all likelihood, they're not going to look at things like your portfolio or even a cover letter if you submit one. They just don't necessarily have the time to do that and they need to set up a ton of interviews. But on the other hand, if a company is looking to hire, say, just one person for a role, they're much more likely to do a lot of due diligence and to look as deeply into this person as possible to try to find the best possible candidate. And one way I like to think about this is essentially that if you're applying to a company where your impact on that overall company is very small relative to the company, they're going to do less due diligence. Whereas if you're applying to, say, a startup where you are one of a few employees, your impact on that company is much larger, so they're going to put a lot more effort into actually doing due diligence and figuring out who exactly it is that they are potentially hiring. As an example of this, when I first joined Algo Expert, by the way, the best way to prepare for your coding interviews, I would imagine that they looked much more deeply at me than just looking at my resume. In fact, I don't even know if I ever even submitted a resume to them. I don't think I did. Instead, they used a variety of other ways to evaluate who I was and to look at me from a broader perspective. So what does this actually mean for you? Well, first of all, if you're applying to a company, whether it's a big tech company or one of these smaller companies, the most important thing for getting an interview is going to be the resume. This is the most important factor by far. And with these big tech companies, it's oftentimes really just the only factor. It's going to be one of the only things, if not the only thing actually considered. Although there are still a couple other factors that can play a role when applying to these big tech companies, so we'll talk about more of those in a minute. But then with these smaller tech companies, the resume is still going to be the most important thing, but they also might potentially look at things 
like your personal website or portfolio, your projects, your GitHub, a cover letter even if you write one, or just a variety of other things that they can find out about you. So I'm not going to make this entire video about how to make the perfect resume. If you want to see that, maybe I'll make another video in the future, but I do want to talk about a few key points with resumes because they are super, super important. So first of all, this should be essentially the best document that you ever make in your life. And to make it that best document, you need to get a lot of feedback on it. And it's important that this feedback isn't coming from like your mom or somebody who's just going to tell you how great it is and not really give you any critical feedback. Instead, it should come from somebody, preferably in the industry if you can, who's going to be brutally honest with you and give you harsh critical feedback to tell you all of the things that you are doing wrong. I've given feedback on a lot of software engineering resumes and I can't go through every single mistake I've ever seen, but I did want to give you a list of some of the most common ones that I do see. So first, make sure that all of your spacing and fonts and everything like this are very consistent. Second, make sure that your bullet points always start with action verbs, as well as when you can have a measurable outcome in them. Third, make sure that your grammar is correct and consistent. This means things like making sure you are using the correct tenses with all of your verbs. Fourth, try to avoid using the same verbiage over and over again. So for example, don't start every single bullet with developed X, Y, and Z. Fifth, almost never use complete sentences. Instead, use short bullet points that are easy to read, things like you would put on a PowerPoint presentation. Number six, take out any fluff that you can. So for example, things like an objective statement just serve no actual purpose. Seven, almost always keep it to one page, especially if you're applying to internships or new grad positions, you do not have enough experience yet to warrant multiple pages. Number eight, test that it can be scanned by an ATS. This is an applicant tracking system and essentially it's an automatic way of scanning your resume. An easy way to sort of test this is to export your resume as a PDF and then copy all of the contents from that PDF into your notes application. So a very bare bones text editor and essentially see if all of the ordering is the same and that all of the content is still there and completely readable. And if you're worried about this, try to stick to a very simple theme and avoid things like two column layouts. Now, when you apply to these tech companies, one of the most important things is going to be to apply in the best medium possible. Now, if the only option is applying online, then of course do that. But if you have access to something like a career fair at a university and companies are going to be there, then applying in person at that career fair is going to be much better and have a much higher success rate than applying online. Alternatively, if you can get a referral from somebody at that company, that can also be a better option than applying online. Although I don't think that referrals are really as important as some people make them out to be. Ultimately, all this really does most of the time is ensure that an actual human is going to look at your resume, which is good, but it doesn't guarantee an interview or anything like that. And I think one of the issues with referrals is oftentimes we are referring people that we've never actually worked with. So people refer their friends and family and things like that, which is fine, but you're not really able to vouch for that person in any way other than maybe just vouch for them as a good person. So you can't really provide much value in that referral. So they're not going to take it all that seriously. For example, I referred a lot of people when I worked at Meta, but most of those people weren't people I'd actually worked with in any significant capacity. So because of that on the referral, I wasn't able to really say a whole lot other than vouching for them as good people and maybe that they have some degree of knowledge, but I couldn't do a whole lot with that referral. And ultimately this meant that the resume got in front of a recruiter, but I don't know that it really did a whole lot more than that. Now with smaller companies, you want to tell sort of a broader story of who you are and why you want to work at that company and why you believe that you're going to be able to have some significant contributions to that company. And generally speaking, I don't really like cover letters, but cover letters at times can be helpful in doing this. Additionally, it can be helpful to do things like create a very polished GitHub. So this means having things like pinned repositories and within all of those pinned repositories, having things like readmes. So it's easy to sort of see what all the different repositories are and so that they feel fairly professional. And if you want to go above and beyond, one thing that some of these companies do like, especially if you're applying to more front end central roles is to have a personal website so sort of some kind of online portfolio and it can also at times be helpful to have a bit of a social media presence and be active at least on places like LinkedIn although I don't think it's that important and if you're deciding between spending time on that or spending time on your resume or preparing for coding interviews LinkedIn would be pretty low on the priority list but if you have extra time it can be good as well another trick with these companies that can be helpful is to tailor your resume to the specific job so instead of having just one version of the resume and you use it to mass apply have multiple versions of your resume 
based on the different types of roles that you might be applying to, and these different versions of your resume could have different skills listed, different projects listed, or even just different bullets for individual projects to showcase different aspects of what you did on those projects that might align better with the different roles you're applying to. Now, probably the biggest mistake I see people making when applying to these tech companies is that they just don't apply enough. You need to recognize that at the end of the day, it is a numbers game. If you apply to one company, your odds of landing an interview at that one company pretty low. But if you applied to say a million companies, your odds of not landing a job interview would be very low. Now, I'm not saying to apply to literally a million companies, but gone are the days where you can just apply to a few, unless maybe you have like a Stanford computer science degree or something. But generally speaking, gone are the days where you can apply to just like five companies and land a job. Much more reasonable would be to apply to a lot. This could be even upwards of a hundred, if not more companies. That way you just increase the number of potential opportunities that you have. And even if you feel like you aren't qualified for a specific job, that's okay. Just apply anyways, because ultimately that's not your decision to make. It is their decision to decide if they think you are right for the job. So let them do that for themselves. Don't reject yourself from the job. Let them decide if you are the right candidate or not. And at times it can seem daunting and even depressing to get all of these rejection letters that you're going to get, but ultimately it's sort of the game we have to play. And luckily we do have tools like LinkedIn and Indeed that make it pretty easy to apply to a lot of companies fairly quickly. And now once you do finally land that coding interview, you'll want to make sure that you are prepared to pass it. And for that, you should watch this video next.